Is there a magic ratio, a perfect balance between nitrate and phosphate, where regardless of what the actual levels are, elevated or not, if we maintain that perfect ratio to each other, the corals thrive, it's the answer to algae, dyno, cyanobacteria, and nutrients in our reef tanks. The conversation has evolved from just concentration or parts per million of nitrate or phosphate in the tank to maybe something different, like a ratio, especially in relation to what happens when one of these things is limited and the other one is abundant, and what types of organisms grow in this environment. So the answer to this question is we don't have all of the answers yet, and we're still learning. I believe some of these things wholeheartedly and other aspects are pretty doubtful, but there's one thing that's true for sure. The evolution will be found in the desire to find out. It's been pretty well documented in the ocean that when nitrogen or phosphorus is either elevated or depleted individually or extreme ends of the ratio, it often produces increased likelihood of pests overtaking the area, and the same is probably true of our aquariums. A big portion of this conversation is over 90 years old. With the Redfield ratio, Alfred Redfield discovered that the ratio of nitrogen to phosphorus is a fairly consistent 16 to 1 meaning for every one part of phosphorus, there's 16 parts of nitrogen throughout the world's oceans, meaning not just dissolved nutrients like nitrate and phosphate, but also the biomass of collected phytoplankton and organic nutrients in the ocean, all 16 to one. Now, when you convert that 16 to one nitrogen to phosphorus to nitrate and phosphate, which is what we commonly test for, it's actually 10 to one nitrate to phosphate. So for every one part per million phosphate, there'll be 10 parts per million nitrate. So the big question here is, is that 10 to one nitrate to phosphate just a happy accident and where the ocean just landed and tends to thrive? Or is it actually a ratio, more than just a specific number that travels up and down and has predictable results in our aquariums? These are the questions we're attempting to answer. There's a slew of resources, websites, and calculators that are dedicated to some of these ratios they will tell you what they believe will happen when you deviate from them, not just at the low end, but the high end as well, and which organisms are more likely to thrive in that environment. Understanding that phrase more likely is important because you haven't created a near certainty of anything, just increase the chances by creating an environment of nitrogen and phosphorus, which is optimal to some organisms over another, just giving them a leg up. The closer that you get to the optimal range for that organism, and the further you get from another, increasing the chances of that happening. But again, not certainty, just increasing the chances. So it's absolutely true that most photosynthetic organisms have a preferred ratio of nitrate to phosphate, and when you meet it, they thrive. You can see that ratio listed on the side of almost every plant fertilizer. Some ratios better for different plants, stages of root production, leafy growth, and flowering or fruiting. It's undeniable that different ratios produce different results with different organisms, and when you meet that organism's needs, it thrives and others don't. This is likely most commonly observed at the extremes, where there's basically no phosphate or phosphorus available in the tank, but there's adequate or even elevated amounts of nitrogen or nitrate, or the inverse with almost no nitrate or nitrogen, but elevated phosphorus. In this case, some organisms will do very poorly and some will thrive. Now this could be that we just created the optimal ratio for that specific organism, or it could just be that it's better equipped to scavenge in an environment where nitrogen or phosphorus is limited. But in either case, they're both competing for space now. And in our case, most of us would like to see the coralline algae, beneficial bacteria, or even corals win out over the pests. So the big question or debate in all this is, is it concentration or is it ratio? Meaning, if it is ratio, do the effects of this scale infinitely up and infinitely down? Or is one part per million nitrate and a tenth of a part per million phosphate, which is fairly low concentration, going to produce the same results or allow the same organisms to thrive as 10 parts per million nitrate and one part per million phosphate, which is considered fairly high? So both of these are a 10 to 1 ratio, but a different concentration, one high and one low, Will the exact same organisms thrive in either environment based on the ratio, even though the concentrations are different? And the answer is probably not, but I also have to admit that I don't think that we know that definitively, and it might, and it might be something entirely different. 
My own belief on the Redfield Ratio and similar types of ratios and how helpful they are is belief is about all you're gonna get. There isn't a lot of hard data out there other than emulating natural seawater tends to produce the highest percentage results. The further you get away from natural seawater concentrations, the less likely that the results will hold true. So don't play mad scientist here and go chasing numbers. These are just guidelines. Probably the most underappreciated piece in all of this is the food we put in our tanks. Some might be five to one or even 40 to one. And even if I wanted the most basic approach to all this, avoiding climbing extreme ends of the ratios and playing mad scientist trying to fix it, how can I do that if my food won't let me? And that's coming up.